What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So before I get started, first and foremost, Happy New Year. I haven't put out a video since last year, 2020, and then the holidays came around. And then I started working on some stuff, not really working on the Challenger or the Ram. So uh, forgive me for that, you know, life gets kind of busy. And uh, one of the projects that I was gonna start in the uh, winter was redoing my entire garage. So I haven't started that yet because I started redoing my office because I spend way more time in the office than I do in the garage. But in the future, I do plan on epoxying these floors, painting the walls a different color, maybe putting some of my Toronto Racing posters up or some other merchandise I come up with. So if you guys wanna see that kind of stuff, you know, let me know, leave a comment below. All right, so jumping into today's video, just like I mentioned in the caption, I have a new shop sponsor. I'm super excited about that because they're gonna help me sort of finish out the things that I can't finish or do in my little garage here. So we're gonna head out there later today. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little walk around, maybe talk to the owner of the shop. And just to tell you right now, the shop is RMS Performance and they are in Cibolo, Texas. So one of the things we're gonna do and they're gonna help me out, help me out with is lowering the Daytona. So lowering it is not such a big deal, but cutting the frame in the rear, adding the C-notch and adding some stitch welds into that is gonna be one of the first things we do. So before I go over there and before I start lowering the truck, I wanna show you guys what I bought to lower the Daytona so you have an understanding of what you may need to lower your truck. All right, so if you've been following me on Instagram or some of my other YouTube videos, I've been mentioning that I've been collecting parts to lower the Daytona. So I decided to lay everything out because I need to take a quick inventory of what I have and don't have or what I may need before I start lowering this beast. So first and foremost, I have here the DJM drop kit, which is this brand right here. So what we're looking at here is the lower control arm for the uh, third gen Ram uh, 1500 specifically. And normally when you lower vehicles, you either get a smaller spring or you do some coilovers. But on these pickup trucks, uh, to lower them, um, and to be able to adjust the camber, all you do is lower the lower control arm. This allows you to adjust uh, the front wheels when you align it, and so the wheels won't be like this, and you start eating up your tires. Uh, this allows you to keep the alignment within spec. Now when I receive this piece, it is heavy. It is of good quality. And if you notice, DJM loves to put poly bushings on everything, which is super nice. You can see here on the ball joint, just like when I did the upper control arms, uh, there's a little hole here because they provide you with uh, the grease fitting to put in there and then you can grease up these ball joints and you also have spots here on the back side. Hold on. To put grease fittings in here. So you have to grease up these bushings before you throw it into your truck. If not, your ride is going to get bumpy and these bushings are going to wear out super quick. Other thing they provide you with are your tie rod end links. And as you can see here, they also have the uh, poly bushings. So really nice. We're gonna skip over this right now and jump back to the DJM kit. So the way you lower the rear end is by getting a flip kit. What a flip kit does is it takes your rear axle and puts it on top of the leaf springs. So you need a lot of heavy duty things to be able to do that. So this is what it comes with. And of course, as you can see again, in DJ M fashion, you've got the red coloring, you've got the black, and you've got poly bushings. Now, what I really like about these rear shackles is that they have multiple options. So you can set the rear height of the bed on the truck. Sometimes some drop kits will lower the rear just a little more than the front. And then it just gives you that rake to look and the truck sits like this, but we want the truck to be level. So by having the adjustable rear shackles, that's gonna save us a lot of headache and getting the truck level. All right, so after you install the DJM rear flip kit, like I said, you take the rear axle and take it from underneath the leaf spring and put it on top of the leaf spring and you lower the back. Well, now your rear axle, the whole axle is closer to the frame of the truck. So you gotta do what's called a C-notch and that is literally cutting the frame of the truck and adding these plates so the rear axle has somewhere to go into and you don't bottom out. So for the rear C-notch, I went with a McGoffey C-notch. Again, great quality stuff, two different companies. So the C-notch is from McGoffey's and it comes with these two plates. And what you do is after you cut your axle, after you cut, excuse me, after you cut your frame, you're gonna plate these together 
And this one goes on the back side like that. Plate them together and then you bolt them together. And there is a new bump stop that comes with it for the rear. And this spacer plate uh, goes towards the back end. I read the instructions already. Now you can bolt it in, but this is where I'm gonna have this stitch welded in because I just don't trust the bolts by themselves. And I feel like the right way to do it is to weld it in. If you're gonna cut metal out, let's weld some metal back in. All right, if you've ever owned or driven a third gen Ram, this is my second one, uh, you can hit a snail in the road and your front wheels will go absolutely crazy. So that's where I decided to beef that part of, of the truck. And I went with a infamous metal uh, lab works. They make a bump steer kit for the third gen Ram. So check this out. All right, that's what you're looking for, infamous metal fab. And they make a bump steer, they make bump steer kits for a lot of trucks. Um, so what you do is on your rack and pinion, you're gonna remove your inner tie rods and install these. They give you new outer tie rods. Look how baller these look. I should probably open these up, huh? All right, I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, so I just opened up one end. So you can see how nice this is. And these pieces go just like that. So this is your new outer tie rod. It's so beefy, it's so nice. And then you got these, which are gonna connect down into, it should be the, uh, the spindle. All right, so this is everything except the Beltec Street Shocks. All right, so this is everything that I'm using to lower my truck. Now there's a bunch of other things you can do. You can get drop spindles and you can drop the front even more. This should be a three, five drop, three inches in the front, five inches in the back. Now you can add a drop spindle to that in the front um, and then you're gonna start having those camber issues I was talking about. That's something I was really trying to avoid. Uh, but the, I think it's infamous metal lab is they sell the tabs that go to your upper control arm and they're much taller to help you fix those camber issues as well. But we're not gonna go that low on this truck so I'm not really too worried about that. All right, so that's the laundry, uh, laundry list of parts right there that I'm gonna use to lower my truck. Next thing I'm gonna do is head over to RMS Fab and talk to Milo about what we're gonna do, when we're gonna do it. The last thing I need though is those shocks. I'm not gonna lower it until I get the shocks in because I'm not gonna tear all that apart again and just to replace the shocks. I'm just gonna do it all at once at the same time. So yes, if you're wondering, this is the last time you're gonna see the Daytona at a stock hike. And I'm excited about that. I'm still gonna have the stock wheels, so don't get your hopes too high. I still need to buy wheels and tires. I'm looking at a couple different designs. Of course, the Viper wheels are up there. Um, and the Hellcat wheels are up there, but I found this other set of wheels that I'm kind of digging. So we'll see what happens. Let's get to uh, RMS. And before I forget, if you want any, any of these parts that I'm using on my truck, uh, and this isn't sponsored by the way, I bought all this like full price. I think the only thing I got on Black Friday was the infamous Bumpster Kit. Uh, I'll put links to everything down below. guys milo's here working and uh he's got the gtr up on the lift i know he's got some crazy stuff going on for here but let me introduce you guys to milo the man's working right now and uh, he can tell you guys a little more about what he does here at uh, rms in cibolo texas so milo what uh what services what do you guys do here so we are a, basically a full-blown custom restoration shop um performance upgrade so we do restoration as far as matching numbers cars, um, everything down to as far as everything that came down to that vehicle. 
um, for the year. We also do full-blown um, road race cars. Uh, we also do drag cars. Anything autocross. Has to do autocross. Um, we do pro touring custom builds. Um, show cars, you know, as far as pro touring show cars. Uh, and we also do a lot of Russell Mott stuff. So we do a lot of, you know, obviously got people that, that still want the original style look, but they either want a little bit of modern technology on their vehicles. So that's where that Russell Mott comes into play. Um, and we also do our Japanese and late model stuff. So um, as far as like this GTR right here, we're just gonna be dropping the motor down. We're gonna be upgrading it with some with some RD engineering uh, 800s um, turbos package. And then we're gonna be doing a Boost Logic uh, complete titanium exhaust system. Yeah, so. gum. So you guys are the man. Everything from Resto Mods. Hey, Ty. What's up? What are you doing, man? Just keeping it in the background. Yep. Anything from Resto Mods, number matching stuff. Got the Chevelle in the background, pro touring builds, everything, late model, Japanese. And that's why I'm here. I mean, you heard all that about the pro touring, the classic cars, and you're wondering what the heck are you doing there then? Well, I've got my Dodge Ram Daytona. It's kind of late model, uh, but mainly the Challenger. So Milo here is gonna be helping me with specifically the alignments, race alignments, and getting the car more dialed in in that aspect, and helping me uh, with uh, other mods, such as like upper control arms, uh, you know, what kind of control arms to get and just kind of going from there because I'm kind of maxed out on my knowledge and I needed to reach out to somebody that would help me out. Milo's the man. He's going to help us out. Toronto Racing Sponsor, RMS, Cibolo, Texas. Yes, sir. You guys know I like to do all the work myself for the most part, uh, just like Ty. He likes to do all the work himself. So when I bring my ram... <laughs> so when I bring, so <laughs> I sprayed it on purpose. Just, so when I bring my truck in after I lower it, I'm gonna lower it first. Uh, Milo's gonna help me do the stitch wells, but he agreed to help show me and teach me some new things that I don't know, such as like welding. But if I start messing it up, like kick me out, bro, and like get it done for me. And then uh, we're gonna fix the exhaust on the Challenger. The exhaust hangs way too low. I'm destroying my driveway just getting into the garage and the car is not even that low, the front is really high. So he's gonna help me and teach me all at the same time. So you guys stay tuned for that. So it was cool when Milo reached out and said, hey man, I really like what you guys are doing. Uh, let's uh, get together and work on something. And we came out here, checked it out, discussed kind of like what we need done, or well, what I need done. Ty came up with what he needed done and we put everything together down on paper to see what we were looking at. There's a couple things that we both still need to do before we start bringing cars in here. But I didn't want to just start bringing cars and trucks and start dropping videos without introducing you guys to Milo, Armist Performance, here in Cibolo, Texas.